Hello folks, this is Jamil Sir for Gunstock Reviews. We're in here in Phoenix, Arizona at the home base of Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How you doing, Marty? Good. Well, today we're not going to do any gunsmithing like we always do. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the Palmetto State Armory PSAK 47 Gen 3, <laughs> which is the newest and greatest from Palmetto State. Um, this one, by the way, folks, is a blem gun. Marty, did you find any blems on it when you saw it earlier? For an AK? No. <laughs> no, um, it's a great made, I mean, it's really well made. It comes in with uh, Magpul forend and grip and stock. This is the MOE uh, stock from Magpul for the AK. This one is green. They, of course, they come in all sorts of colors, even plum if you are into that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and manufactured, uh, what, the first thing we're going to talk is what something Palmetto states uh, talks about a lot is the fact that these are forged bolt carriers, bolts, and front trunnions. What does that? What difference does that, does that make? How how high is the quality material that's going in there, right? So, uh, if it's machined from a billet or let's say a cast, right? So, casting is one of the things that's notori notoriously difficult uh, for those who uh, are getting into it for the first time, uh, especially. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we talk about Ruger. Ruger is one of the best casting manufacturers in the world, right? Yes. They, they uh -huh. make some of the best stuff out there, uh, but you know, even they can have some amount of voids where, when the metal is poured into their mold, you can have little oxygen bubbles or something happen where the metal cools too quickly and you get voids in the cast, right? Well, with molten metal and you have it hammered out and it's squeezed to get all of those those gaps out of the out of the material you end up with a lot stronger material and with a forging i mean you're ending up with a with a higher quality solid piece of metal mm -hmm. so i mean yeah that, that and and they can forge it to shape that's another thing so it the machining it to shape out of like say a bullet a billet and like a solid piece of metal they can machine it, it just takes a long time right like uh you know, famously, the, the early AKs were, their, their receivers were machined from one solid piece of metal. Not anymore, because it's, it's wasteful, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's, they're prized, but, you know, it, it, took, it took a long time just even to make that. When they forge it, they can forge it into a shape that they want and minimize their, minimize their uh, machining out of that and still end up with a very strong, very robust part. So, okay. yeah. We have here in our table uh, Chinese Polytech mm -hmm. from the 80s because back in the and you t were telling me earlier mm -hmm. making me feel old because I remember yeah. when these came out in the 80s and you were in grade school most likely <laughs> more than likely yeah okay so um, the original AK started coming in in the 80s uh, Polytech Norinco mm -hmm. and all those companies were bringing in AKs because they understood that there was a market in the US Mm -hmm. for semi-auto versions of the, you know, their the machine guns, yeah. the AK. Yeah. Um, and of course, these bring a ton of money. Uh, they bring a ton of money. This one is a double underfolder. It has, it underfolds in the stock and on the bayonet. Mm -hmm. And we find a lot of machining marks and sanding mm -hmm. marks and belt sander marks on it mm -hmm. from when it was being made. And this one, for being such a fraction of a price of what this one will cost you, it's a really, really good investment. Really good shooter too. Yeah. We, we took it to the range and other than the fact that I can't see the front sight because the notch is so small, I might have you later machine the notch a little wider hmm. okay. for me and then we'll put in that uh, True Glow front sight okay. so I can actually see it. Mm -hmm. Because I was at the range and we were like probably 10 yards and the target was black and the black on black on black. I, I had to aim higher so I could get some tan on the, in the target and then find the notch and find the front sight and then come down again. I know some people talk about, oh, that the AKs are not precise are not accurate. Is that true? Well, I think it depends on the quality of ammunition that goes into them. Of course. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, like, let's say the Polytech, right? This, this Polytech here has a chrome line barrel, right? It has a chrome line barrel. How consistent is the chrome going through the barrel? I mean, 
is there thickness variation, right? How much, how much is interfering with that bullet as it travels down the barrel? How much is getting sliced off by, by uh, let's say, with differentials in that, in that chrome, right? You know, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard and it's good for corrosive ammunition, but uh, yeah, you might, you might see a problem as a result. And then of course, you know, there's powder variances and headspace variances, right? So uh, the, the gun is designed to operate with an extra amount of space, right? That extra amount of slop means that, okay, yeah, it'll run with dirt in it, but it'll also, it, it, it's, it, it's gotta, it's gotta make up for that somehow. And that's usually where you see an accuracy loss. And not to say that they, you can't shoot one accurately, but most of the time they, they're, they were never built to be a precision gun. That's right. They were never meant to be that. And then there's a lot of people who also say, well, we can add a red dot or an optic, mm -hmm. but the only problem is a couple of problems, a couple of, only a couple of places you can attach a red dot in mm -hmm. this gun. Mm -hmm. I have seen some manufacturers make a Picatinny rail that goes on the, mm -hmm. on this handguard, the upper handguard here. Yeah. I've seen some that throw a Picatinny rail on this mm -hmm. thing here, on this uh, cover. Yeah. And I've, of course, this one, contrary to this one, doesn't have it. Right. This one has the scope mount for the mm -hmm. sliding mount on the side. Mm -hmm. And this is about the most accurate that I could find, but then you have to take it on and off, on and off. How are you guarantee you keeping zero when you take it on and off all right. the time? Right, right. Uh, this is not exactly a gun, so you can put a scope and you're going to be shooting at 600 meters mm -hmm. and expect to do a sub MOA, you know, well, results with it. Not, not everybody needs a sub MOA gun for shooting an AK, right? An AK is not, if you're, if you're shooting sub MOA, most of the time you're in some sort of resting position. You're some, you're on a bench, you're on the ground prone. This is, this is not a gun made to do that. This is a gun to be, you know, in your hands, shooting, mm -hmm. and I it's mean, a combat fire. It's meant to, it's meant to shoot at, you know, it's meant to shoot at the good guys. So that's because it's a bad guy gun. But at the same time, uh, you know, uh, it, it it has to hit between two shoulders or a headshot. And well, at a hundred yards, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, at a hundred yards, it basically has to hit a four inch pie, right? Four M away is a pretty decent standard for for a combat gun, right? Now, will the AK hold that? Depending on ammo. Uh, and of course, they're not behind mm -hmm. the gun too. Because mm -hmm. yes. it doesn't mean that the gun can't do it. It's just, I, can I, I do it? I don't know. I, I've seen plenty of people who've made claims and, and not say that I, I don't believe them. In fact, I believe them wholeheartedly that, uh, you know, these can be a, a one MOA gun. It's just that they weren't really ever meant to be that. You know? No. With this right here, I don't know a whole lot about them, but as far as uh, the quality of the gun, it looks, its build quality looks very, very good. Um, it, it, it's a nice gun, and, and uh, one of the one of the newer things that you might run into is that uh, Amer American-made barrels are usually machined pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. And having said that, you know, let's say talk about the variances in chrome lining. Well, uh, I don't know for certain, but I do know a lot of guys have uh, started running nitride heat-treated barrels. And if you have a nitride heat nitride heat-treated barrel, uh, you have the hardness of chrome with the uh, you, you, you have the hardness of chrome with the consistency of your original barrel. So that's, that's, a, that's a nice thing about it. And, uh, you know, we'll have to, I, I would like to know if they're nitrided because a lot of, I know a lot of guys are doing that now. Yeah. Um, but that, that would only be to their benefit. But as far as the, the overall look of the gun, even if it's not nitrated, heat treated, it's pretty nice. Um, you know, I, I pulled them apart beforehand. I was taking a look at just some of the forged parts and, uh, uh, overall, the feel of the gun's a lot nicer. I'm not a big fan of the double underfolder. I'm especially not a fan of the underfolder because it, I, I like to cheek weld. Mm -hmm. You know, the Magpul furniture on that thing is, is very helpful for that. Um, it's very comfortable. Um, and as far as a, an AK build goes, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I said to you, I want one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and that's what you told me before yeah. that you wanted one and. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. Palmetto State has these on and off because they sell out so fast, okay? So you guys want to purchase one of these? We're going to try to get, not in this platform, of course, but if you hit um, and dot com, and if you hit um, Gunstock Reviews Facebook page, we'll try to throw some links of for Palmetto State. Uh, we, Gunstock Reviews, are affiliates with Palmetto State, and we make a little bit of money, not much, but enough money to 
to come over and buy Marty some breakfast once in a while. <laughs> so, and that's what we want. We want to you know, want to bring you guys um, good product and show you good product. Um, cool thing about the um, it, uh, the Macpool that has mm -hmm. the MOE um, attachment points, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. M-Lock attachment points, which is kind of cool so you can hang stuff on it. Yeah. And the stock is pretty comfortable, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, for a, for, our, for a rifle this small and all that, is just gives you a nice cheek weld. Um, like I said before, the only thing I didn't like is the fact I couldn't see the front sight. Oh, guys, if you're like me, that you want to be a purist, one bad thing about it, it doesn't come with a cleaning rod. Hmm. For whatever reason, they don't include the cleaning rod, but it's ready for it. It has all the holes drilled and the hole in the stock. So you can go to places like Gun Parts and get a cleaning rod for eight bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and or place an order to Gun Parts, parts and order a couple of other things uh, for different guns, and I'm gonna include a cleaning rod in there. So, you know, forge parts, good. Build, yeah, good. good. Um, Mac pull parts, good. Mm -hmm. Price, double good. Yeah, yeah. So, and if you, I mean, honestly, you do not need to buy, not that I'm pushing you away from buying the more expensive parts, the, the uh, Blem guns for the price, you can't beat that. That, that, that thing, that thing uh, I've seen guns with more handling marks coming out of gun stores than I have out of, out of that one right there. That one's in very good shape. Well, thanks, Marty. I uh, appreciate your help, of course. And folks, again, thanks for watching. Please remain healthy, be safe, and have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.